Ask most Americans and they'll tell you the economy is still struggling. But for U.S. companies, the third quarter was extremely profitable. Investors reacted to those strong results, pushing all three major stock averages up more than 10 percent during the period. Since then, the market has continued to rise, as have the expectations for fourth quarter earnings. But are those forecasts too optimistic? Nihilus Mativ answers that question on this episode of Money and Markets and tells you which stocks are likely to outperform in the current quarter. Then we'll take a closer look at individual sectors of the economy. Mike Larson and Martin Weiss discuss the challenges facing the financials. Tony Sagami shows you how to grab outsized gains in technology. And Sean Broderick and Elliot Gu mine for gold among natural resource stocks. Plus, Jen Amos uncovers the hidden gems and landmines in this week's Picks and Pans. All that and more coming up right now. From our studios in Jupiter, Florida, Weiss Money Network presents Money and Markets. And now, Jamie Holmes. Hello, everyone. This week, we're taking a look back at a solid quarter for corporate earnings and a look ahead to the fourth quarter. Joining us with his views is Nihilus Mativ, a financial analyst at Weiss Research and the editor of Dividend Superstars. He comes to us via Skype from his home in Chad's Ford, Pennsylvania. Hello, Nihilus. Hi, Jamie. It's good to see you, Nihilus. First of all, what was your overall impression of the third quarter earnings season? Well, across the board, things looked pretty good. About 80% of the S&P 500 companies beat the estimates that were out there. So I think on the surface, you know, we had a really solid quarter. Um, the thing is, if you dig a little bit deeper into the numbers, you'll see that a lot of these profit gains are still coming on cost cutting and other kind of corporate actions that are not really sustainable for you know long term recovery. Um, this is the same story we've been seeing for the past couple quarters, and um, you know I think eventually investors are really going to want to see sales picking up. So while on the surface it looks really good, I think um, if you take a closer look, there's still some cause for concern. Okay, so so what do these results tell you about the health of the overall economy? What I'm seeing is that companies, you know, while they're having good profits, are still very conservative. You know, for example, according to Moody's Investor Services, um, co corporate you know coffers right now have a trillion dollars in cash stuffed into them, and uh, that means that companies are really not ready to commit to hiring up uh, their staff or uh, really convinced about economic recoveries right now. So you know, and I think we're seeing the same thing on the consumer side. That's why sales results uh, have been so lackluster. I think people are, are really not confident in an economic recovery, and so they're, they're not willing to open their pocketbooks right now. Nihilus, which particular sectors of the economy performed especially well during the third quarter? Well, speaking from the dividend superstars portfolio, um, you know, about nine out of our 10 companies beat their earnings very uh, solidly. And consumer staples are a big part of our portfolio. Across the board, all of those big brand name companies like Coca-Cola and Altria and Hershey um, blew away their earnings. So, you know, I think um, sector-wise, consumer staples looked very strong um, among others. So that's one pocket of strength. Okay, give, give me a few more individual stocks in your portfolio that really did well and had a, a blowout quarter. Well, in addition to the companies I just named, uh, we have a semiconductor company, for example, that you would think is highly cyclical and, and related to the economy, and they just posted their third uh, record consecutive quarter of sales gains. So um, I saw some strength there. And the company that really blew away everybody was Walgreen. That's a firm that I just added uh, in the last two months to uh, both my dividend superstars portfolio and dad's income portfolio. They, um, you know, I saw this recovery in their business coming uh, a long way ahead of time. A lot of analysts were skeptical about their results. And uh, what happened is that when their third quarter earnings finally came out and blew everybody away, the stock uh, jumped 12% just that single day alone. And we're sitting on open gains now in that position of about 30%. So it, it gives you a sense of how important earnings are to the market and also how much, you know, how much potential there is when you find a story that other people are getting wrong. Is this going to keep going on? I mean, is this your outlook going forward? Do you think these earnings are going to continue to be strong? Well, uh, you know, I think the farther we get from the, the last economic bottom, the more difficult it's going to be for these companies to really surprise people. Um, you have to remember that earnings gains are always premised on a relative basis to what's happened either the last year or the last quarter. And um, so, you know, it, comparisons become more difficult as, as we move farther away from the economic trough. Bottom line, I think that uh, companies are going to have a harder and harder time beating and impressing you know, investors' expectations. So um, I definitely remain a little bit 
conservative regarding the fourth quarter and especially as we go into 2011. Okay. Thanks, Nihilus. Thank you, Jamie. Nihilus highlighted one sector of the economy that will likely continue to outperform. And of course, we're talking consumer staples. But what's ahead for the industry that has largely driven the economy over the past few years? We're talking about financials. Joining us on set to discuss that sector is Weiss Research Financials and interest rate analyst Mike Larson. He is also the editor of the Safe Money Report. Mike, it's always so good to see you. I'm glad to be here. Okay, Mike, uh, first of all, what was your takeaway from the results of the big financial firms in the third quarter? Well, Jamie, they weren't great, but they weren't terrible either. I think what you're starting to see at the core banks is that the credit environment's stabilizing, um, but it's not getting a lot better. The banks are starting to walk down their loss reserves as they see mortgage and credit card delinquencies, uh, you know, flat and plateau. Um, but that's, you know, that's going to pad the earnings for a little while in the short term. But at the same time, the financials aren't making much money from trading in the securities markets on the other side of the ledger. You know, the Fed's got, is running monetary policy very easy, but it's getting harder and harder to make money on that side of the business. So what you've seen again is loss, uh, credit losses come down from where they were a few quarters ago. But bank lending really hasn't done much, and the securities business again is sort of flat. Okay, speaking of banks, which banks do you think are in the most danger moving ahead here? Well, Jamie, we've heard a lot about these questions surrounding robo-signings and foreclosure gate and all that. Mm -hmm. So the banks that have exposure to that part of the business, the big mortgage servicers, are really uh, on the firing lines. That would include a company like Bank of America or even a company like H&R Block, which used to own a mortgage division. They're sort of perceived to be the worst actors out there. Um, so investors really need to stay away from the banks with a lot of exposure to mortgages that are foreclosed or in foreclosure or more than 30 days past due, and instead focus on the banks that don't have that exposure. Um, we're also seeing some weakness in the European side of the business. You see a name like a UBS, for example, that's having problems again in the capital market. So its shares fell after reported earnings. Uh, that's the disappointing type banks and, and what have you that, that are out there that you don't want to mess with. Okay, anywhere in the industry that you're seeing upside potential? Well, Jamie, for the most part, I can't find a real compelling reason to own the entire sector. I mean, I wouldn't want to go out and buy a banking ETF. Um, but within that sector, you can find certain strength in, say, a credit card company like a MasterCard or Visa. They don't have the credit exposure. They make money from transaction processing. So something like that might work. Um, you would also have some of the brokers out there, the Ameritrades or Schwabs of the world. Uh, they don't have the credit exposure. They don't have the mortgage exposure. And with the market starting to rise, uh, you know, those are the kinds of guys that could make money from that. Mike, what, what is your outlook for the financials in the current quarter and, and even beyond that? You know, I think we're going to see more of the same. I don't really expect anything spectacular from the industry. Uh, you've got regulation that's sort of capping the upside now, and you also have the Fed that's sort of limiting the downside with this easy money. So again, no real catalyst for a huge rise, but also none of those widespread bank failures, uh, you know, market collapsing like we saw back in 2008. Um, the credit concerns are still out there. The delinquencies do remain elevated, um, but banks can make some money. So I almost look at them as like a utility. They're heavily regulated. They're not going to do great, um, but they're also not going to be allowed to see widespread failures. Okay, Mike Larson, thanks so much. And stick Thank around. You. We're going to bring you back a little bit later in the show to discuss your thoughts about the future earnings picture with a, a couple of other experts. Thanks so much. Sounds good.